said when they were come to the multitude there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying Lord have mercy on my son for he is lunatic and sore vexed for oftentimes he falleth into the fire and, and oft into the water and I brought him thy disciples and they couldn't cure him then Jesus answered and said oh faithless and perverse generation how long shall I be with you how long shall I suffer you 
bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, yeah. and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Yeah. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? Mm -hmm. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Yes. Father, we thank you and we praise you once again for who and for all that you are. And Lord, we thank you for everything you do, Lord, for us, in us, and through us. God, we just ask you to meet with your people tonight. Lord, bless and help in a way that only you can. We'll try the best of our ability to praise you for it. In Christ's name, amen and amen. amen. But if we look back at this thing right quickly in context, if you was to go back to the top, I don't want everyone to take anything out of context or give anything out of order by any means, but if you was to go back, chapter 17, verse number 1, and after six days, the Bible said, Jesus taketh Peter and James and John and his brother and bringeth them to a high mountain apart yeah. and was transfigured before them and and his face did shine as the sun, and the raiment was white as the yeah. light. And behold, there Amen. appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt let us make hither, make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. And while he spake, behold, a, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out, out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son. And whom I'm well pleased, hear you him. And I begin to read and think about that. And boy, it's good to be on a spiritual mountain, if you will. If you've ever been there, you know what I'm talking about. It's good to be on a spiritual mountain. Boy, just being able to feel the presence of God and, and just being able to hear his voice and, and to have that innermost fellowship and relationship, if you will, with God and, and just to enjoy being a Christian, just enjoy being born again, just enjoy serving him. That's what they had right here. Jesus took them to a mountain. I'm glad when he lifts us up to those high points in our yeah. spiritual life yeah. and how he like, ministers to us and through us and for us and, sure. and does all these things. And, and man, they was there and they saw him and, yeah. and all those things and, and they had a desire to serve him. They said, Lord, we want to build three, not just one church, we want to build three up here on this mountain. And I mean, that's a lot of work and a lot of labor, but they weren't worried about it because they was with him. Yeah. And when you think it can't get any better, Brother Ross, God the Father steps out on the front porch of heaven. He just steps out and said, this right here, this is my beloved son, whom I well believe here you have. And man, it was going good if you ever been there. And it seemed like everything was hunky-dory, peachy king, and, and all that was good, and, and all those things happened. But down in verse number nine, the Bible said as they came down from the mountain, Anybody know what's at the bottom of every mountain? A valley. Amen. You ever been there? <laughs> sure you have. But when you're in the valley, you're, you're not alone. See, there was a select few that well, Jesus Jesus took up on the mountain. Peter, James, and John, his brother. There wasn't but three on the mountain with Jesus, according to this text yeah. and this scripture right here at this point in time. Yeah. There was three. Oh, but notice in verse number 14, as they come off the mountain into the valley... And when they were come to the multitude. Do you see that? Yeah. That word multitude, it speaks of many. It can be expressed, Brother Woody, all the way up into the millions mm -hmm. or in a valley. Mm -hmm. That's the Christian life. There's mm -hmm. mountains. There's valleys. Mm -hmm. There's in between. There's here. There's there. There's everywhere. Mm -hmm. But there's mm -hmm. valleys in service. And I'm glad the Bible makes that clear. Mm -hmm. He said, as they came down from the mountain, they came into this valley, and when they come there, there's a multitude. Yeah. There's a multitude of people in these valleys. What's that say, preacher? It's saying there's problems all around us. There's mm -hmm. needs all around us. There's issues, situations, circumstances. We're surrounded by them. Mm -hmm. Notice when they come down, there's a multitude of people there. Everybody in that valley, everybody in that multitude had a need. But there wasn't but one going to get their need met. Read the whole story. Everybody was there. Jesus was there. Help was there. And one person got help. We come in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, revival night, special meeting night, and Jesus is faithful to come, and I'm glad for the folks that come, 
But I'm afraid we leave time after time after time without getting the help God has for us. Everybody in this crowd, Jesus is not a respecter of persons. He's not going to do anything for you. He won't for me or vice versa. Help was there. It wasn't just on the way, honey. Help was in the midst. But they left without getting help. One person is going to get help. We're going to learn some things about this man right quick and we'll close out. This man comes in verse number 14 when the multitude was there. There came a certain man. That word, that word certain man means only one or alone. That's why I told you only one got help. And kneeling down to him. He didn't come to the crowd. He didn't come to the disciples. He came straight to where Jesus. He got straight to the point of the matter. He wasn't there beating around the bush. He wasn't he humming or humming around. He came right there and he said, Jesus, I need you. Lord, Master, I need you. You're the only one that can help me. You're the only one that can do what needs to be done. If you don't do it, it won't get done. He said, Lord, have mercy on my son. He got straight to the point. He is lunatic and sore wrecks for oftentimes he falls into the fire and often into the water. He just gets to the point. He said, hey, and what's his need tonight, church? He needs his son. Mm -hmm. He said he's a lunatic. That means he's got mental problems. And he's sore vexed. That word sore vexed, it means to be suffering miserably. Yeah. How many around us tonight are suffering, suffering miserably? Yeah. They've got this issue. They've got that issue. They've got this problem. We could go over to Luke chapter 9 and read the same story tonight. And it says it hardly ever departed from him. So there wasn't any good days. There wasn't any good times. He had this situation all the time. It was not leaving. It wasn't leaving. There was hardly any time that he didn't suffer. But he said that he would fall into the fire and he would fall into the water. And I've read after many commentators, amen, and I've talked to many preachers, and they all had their thoughts and their opinions on what spiritually this meant. Do you know what I did? I just got my concordance out. And I just looked up the word fall. Anybody know what the word fall means? It means to err, to fail, or to make a mistake. I thought, man, I fall all the time. I fall all the time. I err a lot. I make a lot of mistakes. I come short quite often. And then he spoke of the word fire there. And when I looked that up, it speaks of fiery trials or fiery tests. I looked the word water up, and it speaks of storms. And it speaks of troubles and trials and things of those nature. You say, preacher, what do you mean? If you put all that together, it means when he's put to the test, he fails. It means when the storms come, they overcome him and they take over him. Is that not the world we're living in, that you're living in, that I'm living in? As long as we're up on the mountain with Jesus, everything goes fine. But when we start coming down in the valley, we've got to start making decisions and choices. Oftentimes, we make the wrong one. Oftentimes we err. Oftentimes we fail. Oftentimes we come short. Oftentimes we end up in the water. Amen. He would often fall into the fire and the water. And I began to think, this is this man's son. I wonder how many of us tonight have children that have erred. How many of us tonight have children that have failed? When the choice comes, when the decision comes, they simply made the wrong one. Mm -hmm. And we can say they're with the wrong crowd. We can blame it on the crowd all they want to. But I'm glad I am what I am tonight. Not of myself, but by the grace of God. I'm not yeah. better than they are. So yeah. don't misunderstand what the preacher's saying tonight. I'm preaching as a man in the flesh tonight. I, I'm not any better than you. I'm not any better than them. If God hadn't have brought me from where I was, I would still be there if I wasn't dead in hell. I didn't pull myself up by my own bootstraps. I didn't get out because of my goodness or because of who I was. I got out because the Savior came down in the valley where I was at. And because I got to where he was because he brought me there or I'd still be in the shape I was in or work. But so we see that this man has a son. We see his, his issue. Verse number 16, he said, I brought him to the disciples. They couldn't cure him. The father had did all that he could do for this son. I believe he loved this boy. I believe he really wanted him to get help. I believe he was doing everything that he could do. He said, man, I... I Preacher, how are you talking about that? I believe he's come to a point where he truly feels helpless. He says, man, I've given, I've tried, I've talked with him. I've I brought him to the preacher. I've brought him to church. I've prayed with him. I've prayed for him. I've done everything that I can do, but he ain't getting any better. He ain't getting any better. 
Apparently he had heard the disciples had some power. So he brought them to the disciples. Back in the day, people would hear that the church had some power. They heard good things about churches. You don't hear me that many more. And I'm sick and tired of hearing what this preacher done or what this deacon done or what the piano player done or whatever. I want to hear how Jesus showed up in the service and, and how Jesus come down and, and how the Shekinah glory filled that place. And I want to be like that old Queen Sheba come in there and say, hey, hey, everything they said was true and the hat's not been told. I'm talking about having a paper bag up to keep her from, from passing out, having to breathe in. They may say, hey, it's even better than they said. Yeah. That's the way our God is, and that's the way we ought to live and act. But he'd heard something about him. No doubt his hopes got up when he heard, man, these disciples got some power, and they went there. But I'm glad when he went to the disciples, and the disciples couldn't do it, they realized where the power truly came from. I've read a lot of times throughout the scripture how Paul spoke words or did things or Peter did things and, and all this apostolic power that was given to the apostles in those days. How they did those things. And man, they tried to buy the power. They tried to buy this. And I'm glad Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have freely I give. It all came from Christ. Yeah, that's right. This man realized that it wasn't Peter, James, and John, even though that was on the mountain of Jesus. It was Jesus that was going to do it. Verse number 17. Watch this real closely. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? That word faithless means to, to have a weak or to have no faith. That phrase perverse, it simply means to turn away. How many do we know in our day and time that I believe were truly saved and born again? They was something for God. There was a change, a difference made in them. But they come off the mountain. They came in the valley. And they fought. They fell into the water. They fell into the fire. They erred. They erred. And now they're faithless and perverse. Their faith has got so weak that they've turned away. They used to come. They used to did. They used to be. They used to what? And don't get me wrong, I, Brother Randy, I'm not beating them up tonight. It's by the grace of God I've told you that I'm standing here. Come Wednesday nights, you might say, Where brother, where's Brother Chris at? It's him that keeps me coming. It's his will. It's his word. It's his desire. It's what he's put inside of me. If I get in a valley so deep and so dark that I can't look up and I fail and far so far that I can't go any further, please come and knock on my door. Please come and remind me that the same God that saved me still loves me and he has a desire for me and he still wants me to come. Go call my disciples and the Peter. Yeah. There's sometimes I'm Peter. I've got foot and mouth disease. <laughs> But I'm glad he still calls for me. He still desires me. Yes. I'm not preaching as heady and high-minded tonight. I'm preaching of somebody broken tonight. Bless him, Lord. As I know preachers that used to preach the word of God mm -hmm. without excuse, without apology. They just stand up and let her fly. And I believe with all my heart that they lived what they preached. Yes. Bless him, Lord. And I think ain't in church nowhere. Mm -hmm. I used to. I did one time. And you know people, I'm not talking about just preachers, lay members, saints of God. They've got hurt. Their valleys got bigger than they was. And it could be, God forbid, that, that we, the disciples of Christ, have failed them. Yes. We yes. couldn't accomplish what they needed. And we didn't send them to the one that could. He shows their lack of faith. He shows their turning away. But I'm glad in the midst of all that, he still gives an invitation. Yeah. Preacher, what are you talking about? Even after he spoke of their perverseness, even after he spoke of their faithlessness, how long shall I suffer you? And he said, bring him hither to me. Yes. Just bring him to me. Church, I'm glad tonight if we can just get it to Jesus. Amen. Everything's going to be okay. Yeah. As long as I can get to him, everything's going to be just fine. As long as there's not a barrier there. I'm glad the veil was rent from top to bottom and the door was open. And he said, whosoever will, let him come. I'm glad he's made a way. And I'm glad the veil's been open for you and I. Verse number 18. As soon as he brought him to him. And Jesus rebuked who? The devil. Amen. You know why a lot of the folks act the way that they act and do the things they do? Because of the devil. 
Amen. Amen. I read more than one occasion in the Bible, you're of your father, the devil. devil. Yeah. It was. He was a liar from the beginning. He was yeah. not the truth. He was a murderer. He came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Amen. And he does really good at what he does. Yes, he does. He's a good devil, amen, yes. at what he does. Yeah. He's a good devil. Well, but after the father brings him to him, notice. After he's cast out the devil and he departed out of him, the child was cured from that very hour. Amen. I'm glad getting to Jesus is not a 12-step process. Right. I've right. talked to people that said, well, before you can be saved, you've got to do this and this and this and this and that. You've got to do this you've got to do that. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and the household. Amen. That sounds pretty simple. Bless him, Lord. That's all I did the night that he saved me. If it takes more than that, I'm still lost. But I know what he came into me. I know what he done in me, through me, and for me. I notice he was But notice after Jesus did this healing, notice the reaction of his disciples. Yes. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart. They didn't ask this openly because they didn't want everybody to know the answer. And said, why could we not cast him out? I think what they could have been saying in reality is, Lord, where's the power of God? Lord, there was a time that I had power with you in my life. There was a time that I was closer to you. There was a time that I clinged to you. There was a time that I depended on you. There was a time that I might have been a little bit more spiritual. Is that okay? Yeah, much more. There was a time that I might have been a little more godly, a little bit more Christ-like, and, and now that's gone. God, where did it go? Where did it go? Pretty good question, isn't it? Yeah. But I'm glad Jesus is faithful to answer. Right. And I'm glad that he'll answer when we're apart and he don't just yeah. hold us in front of everybody, aren't you? <laughs> and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. They have, what is this? This is verse number 20. So what was that? About 15 verses ago, they were on the mountain building temples and tabernacles and doing all these things for God. Now they didn't got enough faith to serve him 15 verses later. Preach it, because of your unbelief. Yep. Man, you believe enough to build churches. You believe enough to do this. You believe enough to say it's good to be here. But you didn't believe enough to, to get in the center to me. Yeah. And I thought, Brother Gary, that sounds like the church hates that we're living in. Yeah. We'll give them isms and schisms. And we'll give them this. And we'll quote that. And we'll do the other. We'll be religious. But where's the power going? Yeah. Where's your brother? Where'd the power come from? It came from him. For everyone to get the power, we're going to have to get to him. Amen. Many of us wrestle with many things. But it seems like we fail so many times. We end up in the fire. We end up in the water. But I'm glad we can answer this invitation that they answer. Just bring it to him. Why is that? Because he's able to, to take care of it. I read a few things in my study now. I'm just going to read you a few verses, Bless give you a few stories, and I'm done. I'm preaching on a thought tonight of just bring it to him. I've drawn a big illustration to get to this because I've seen some things lit up on my page up here that I didn't see when I was in my study. So all that was free. It was just extra free. But just bring it to him. I thought about this while I was in my study. Many times it seems like we don't have enough. Have you ever been there? Just don't have enough. Whatever it is, time, money, effort, energy, whatever. It don't seem like they have enough. Matthew chapter 14, there was a, a great multitude there. There was over 5,000 men. I don't think that included the women and children because they called them men, but that's debatable. And when it came time, they didn't have enough. The man said, hey, let's just send them away. We've just got a few pennies worth, and we don't have this, and we don't have that. The deacons had done that and said, hey, we can't feed this multitude. But I'm glad Jesus wasn't willing to send them away hungry, aren't you? Amen. I'm glad Jesus takes care of feeds and clothes his children, aren't you? And, and they said, Lord, what are we going to do? And they said, well, there's a, a young lad. He's got five loaves and two fishes. Yeah. You, you remember what Jesus said? 
Just bring it to me. Yeah. Just bring it to me. That's what he said. You can go back and read the verses. He said, Jesus said, bring it to me. He broke it. He blessed it. He fed the multitudes. And there was 12 baskets left over. Isn't that wonderful? Preach what he's saying. I'm saying just give Jesus what you got and he'll make it enough. Yeah. Just give him your best. Give him what you got. I don't know who this little lad is, and I guarantee you he didn't give it to the Lord so that he could be written down in the Bible and people could look and say, hey, a little kid can serve God. I'm glad they can. But he would just say, Lord, this is all I've got. It ain't much. It's just my lunch, but I'll give it to you if you can use it. And God took it and made it more than enough. Isn't that wonderful? No wonder Paul said, I know what it is to be abound, and I know what it is to abase. But in all yeah. these things, I've learned to be content with whatever state that I was in. Why is that, Paul? Because my God is able he, to supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ yeah. Jesus. But what really amazes me about this story, if you was to go back over there in Matthew chapter 14, read in verse 15, the Bible said they were in a desert place. Yeah. What do you think of when you think of desert? Sand, hot, dry, miserable. I don't like hot, sticky stuff. Lacking of some things. But in verse number 19, the Bible said the Lord commanded them to sit down in green grass. Huh? You ever seen green grass in the midst of a desert? Preacher, what are you talking about? I'm talking about God's got a field of grace. Yeah. No matter where we are. He's able to take us from a hot, miserable situation and He leadeth me beside the still water. He maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. Why? Because that's who He is. Because that's where He does. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm glad God's with us tonight. I'm glad God's for us tonight. And we'll just bring it to Him. He'll take care of it. Amen. He'll take care of it. Many times we're tired and weary and can't seem to find rest. But I'm glad he tells us just to bring it to him. Preach, what are you talking about? He said, come unto me. Yeah. All you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will oh, give you rest. Just bring it to him. Oh, How many times do we wrestle with things? Oh, How many times do we try to take care of things? I love my kids to death, each and every one of them. None of them any different than I do. The biggest ones and the littlest one or vice versa. But every one of them is just like me. I was going to say their mama, but she's looking real mean at me, so I'm not going to say that. They'll try their best and kill themselves doing whatever it is they're doing, but they will not ask for help. And then at the very end, they're so agitated and so irritated, and they'll come in and say, Daddy, I'm just a failure because I couldn't do it. Your father was right here the whole time. Yes. Right. We have not. Why? Because we yes. ask not. Amen. So many times we struggle trying to do God's work and trying to do God's will. And God said, I never told you to do that. Boy, I don't know how many times Jonathan's went out. He does a wonderful job, and I'm so thankful for him. I'm so proud of him. Right. Yeah. But he goes out, and he does this work, and he does this, and he comes in, and he's beaten, and he's battered. Son, what are you doing? Well, I was trying to do this. I, I never asked you to do that. And that's from a physical aspect, but now you look at that from the spiritual yeah. side. God said, I never intended for you to do that. And if I had them, I would have got you some help. I would have helped you myself. Well, you Hebrews chapter 4, the Bible said there remaineth a rest. Aren't you glad there's still a rest for the people of God even in the midst of a falling apart world? When the world's falling apart, I'm glad he gives rest. Yes. Amen. I begin to think about when we're sick and afflicted, and we need help, and we can't help ourselves. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16, the Bible said, They brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and he healed all that were sick. What made the difference? They brought it to Jesus. Amen. Yes. Matthew chapter 9, verse number 2, the Bible said, and Behold, they brought unto him a man sick with palsy. You know what happened there? He healed him, amen. What was the difference? They brought it to Jesus. Yes. Matthew chapter 18, verse number 22. The Bible said, and there was brought unto him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb, and, and he healed him. The blind did see, and the dumb spake, and the deaf did hear. You take him to any other doctor, and they're going to say, that boy's going to be in that shape forever. But there was a great physician who said, just bring him to me. Amen. I thought about our children, how we need to get them to God. Yes. Matthew 19, verse number 13. Then were brought unto him little children. 
I thought, well, we need to get our children to God. I told one of the guys at work the other day, I said, we, we failed miserably as fathers. I said, that we want to, I think all men are this way, and I, I hope to an extent they're this way. More. They want to give their kids more than they had growing up. I didn't have much. I'm thankful for what I had. We lived in an old falling down house trailer. You didn't have to go outside to see if the wind was blowing because there was a gap this yeah. wide in the corner and the wind blew it come inside. I slept That's underneath cool. the blanket. Thank God we went yard sale one time. Thank God for yard sales. Went to a yard sale one time and, and I bought a hair dryer. A little fold up travel size hair dryer and I'd plug that thing in the wall at night and I'd put that thing underneath the sheets of my bed and I'd use that thing while I was away to try to keep warm because it was so cold back there and in the house where I was. But God provided and was faithful. So I made up my mind. I taught my wife that trick in the first house that we lived in together. She thought I was crazy but then she realized it was warm. Then we got an electric blanket. Amen. We was high class hillbillies at that point. But she'd reach up and cut the air conditioner on the window right above the bed when the blanket got too hot instead of turn the blanket off. But anyway, I'm trying to get somewhere. Bless him, Lord. I made up my mind. I, I want my kids to have more than I did. Bless him, Lord. I want them to have a, a nicer house, per se. I want them to have nicer clothes. All mine was hand-me-downs or fit they call. A lot of times they didn't even fit. Hey, man, I'm just glad to get them and put them on. Bless him, Lord. But I told that man, it was right before I left my last job, working 60, 70, 80 hours a week, I stood out there and I prayed about it and I wrestled with it. My son grew up, my daughters was growing real, real fast. And I was missing it. I said, here I am out here trying to give them worldly things. And I said, I'm missing the mark so bad because God wants them to have a daddy. I said, I'll leave in the morning before they get out of bed. I get home at night after they've already went to bed. If I see them, it's for a little while on Sunday. If I get off in time on Wednesday night for church or whatever. And I said, I'm failing as a father because I'm not there for my kids. I said, I need to spend more time getting them to God. God closed the door with that job. And he put me in a job where most of the time I can work eight hours, eight hours a day, five days a week. There's sometimes that it adjusts. But before I worked six days a week, they tried to get seven. I told them that wasn't happening. 16, 18 hours a day, the money was great. But if you ain't got time to spend it, you can't enjoy the ones you're spending on, then why have it? If I can't have a life and can't have my family, do I have one? But we've worried about all these things, but they brought them to God. Preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying we've told them, we've brought them, we've prayed for them, we've done all these things, we've cried, we've done all that. Preacher, what do I need to do to get my children to God? You need to give them to God. Bring it out here. Just give it to God. Say, God, if you don't save them, they're going to die and go to hell. God, if you don't move, God, if you ain't big enough, they're not going to get in. I remember when they was trying to bring those children to Jesus that time. The disciples stood there and said, Told him pretty much trouble not the master. He said, the kingdom of heaven is so. He said, suffer to be so. Yeah. I'm glad he didn't turn any children away, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Glad he didn't Amen. turn me away that night that I need to get saved. Amen. I'm glad he won't turn our children away when they come either. I thought about this tonight. All of our burdens and cares. The Bible said, casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. Preacher, what's that mean? Just bring it to him. Bring it to him. Our situations, our circumstances, our headaches and our heartaches, I'm glad we can just bring them to Jesus, aren't you? Amen. I'm glad a sinner can just bring it to him for salvation. Just call upon the name of the Lord. Bless him. But I thought about this in closing. John, chapter 21, verse number 25. And the Bible said, There are also many other things which Jesus did. The which, as they should be written, every one, I suppose, that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. And at the end of that, Brother Woody said, Amen. Amen. This is in three and a third, three and a half years of what he does. They said the world couldn't contain all the books. Amen. How much has he done since then? Yeah. How much has he done for you? Sure. How much has he done for your family? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we base life on mountains and valleys like we started out. Not on what he's done. Not on what he's doing. And not on what he's going to do. He that called us is faithful. He's faithful. 
You and I have erred, we've failed, we've been in the fire, we've been in the water, but Jesus has never failed. Amen. He's never come short. Failure is not in his vocabulary. Amen. He's never made a mistake. There's never been one prayer request you've ever took to him, one earnest prayer that you've ever took to him, Brother Wood, and he's had to say, no, I can't, I can't do that. There's never been one sinner that's prayed and said, God, would you save me? He said, no, I, I just can't save you. Huh? Think about that. There's never been one person that's needed peace or help or hope or healing. And Jesus said, no, I can't. Why? Because he's got all power. God is faithful. Even when we're not. When we can't heal, when we can't do these things, I'm glad he still does. Preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying the choice is yours tonight. You can be the multitude. Help's here. And you can walk away without help. Or you can be the certain one yeah. that gets the help that they need. Yeah. We can do that each and every service. We can do that each and every week. The yeah. choice is yeah. ours. What are you going to do? Not too much. Will you bring it to him? Are you tired of being helpless? Are you tired of being hopeless? Are you tired of being burdened? Are you tired of being discouraged? Are you tired of not having any peace, any joy, any victory? Not too much. Tired of being dead and dried up? Come to one that can. Sincerely and earnestly and act. Not too much. I promise you he'll help you. Amen. I ask you tonight. I'm finished. You, Whatever it is that God's laid on your heart, your mind right now, throughout all this ramble, it's surely for something. Will you bring it to him? I'm going to bow down here and pray. And I want to ask God to help me. Church, I want to be a witness. I want to be a light. I want to have compassion. I want to make a difference. Not because I'm anything. But because he's everything. Yes. I want everybody that I've come in contact with to know that Jesus loves me and that I belong to him. Yes. And I want to know that they can too. There's a better life. There's a better help. There's a better hope. There's a heaven tonight to shine. There. Shine. There's a hell. Yes. Vice versa. Repeat that. Yes. Turn that around. I said it's great. You're paying attention. You love. You did good, sis. You passed. I'm telling you, I stuck the in my mouth. But whatever your need is tonight, will you bring it to him? Yeah. You can pray there in your pew, but what a blessing to just come to the altar. Yeah. A place you and I, Gentile yeah. dogs, will never allow, but God got to rip the veil. Your children, so we can get in. Whatever your need is tonight. Maybe you want to pray and ask God. Maybe you want to bring something to him. Maybe you just want to come and pray. Yeah. So God, it was good for us to be here. I'm glad you're still meeting with your children. Yeah. Whatever it is, honor God and he'll bless you. Yeah. Father.